It's been a little turnover from the first period, not able to generate enough possession in the CM defensive end, and CM turning it around either at center ice or halfway in the zone. Linehan tried to tip it in, but it was knocked right out. Here comes CM. Knights trailing by one. They have the puck. That shot high over the top with the netminder. McGinnis dropping down to his knees. Now CM starts to put some pressure on. That's because uh, the puck's not up the other end with Hingham forcing the play in the offensive end. They're spending too much time defending their own end because they're not able to establish possession in CM's defensive area. Good so job here, by Colucci here winning a back battle. Again. Here they are back again. Colucci clears it along the wall. Let's see how far they get it this time to establish a possession. Not just that, see, it's a dump in and they're going to be face off outside the line. So, you know, you, you could just go rush after rush after rush that they're not able in this period to establish possession. Let's see what happens here. This is the one who almost got kicked in, I thought, by CM defensively. Right in front of the net, finally cleared by CM defense. Boy, you hate to see that puck down there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, those can go in by accident. Puck at center ice. Hingham with the one goal lead. They just muscled the puck in. That was Stephen Ballou. He had an assist on that first goal, the only goal of the game. Now they send it down low. Catholic Memorial with possession along the far wall. And they'll just try to move it out. Kept alive. Good job. Stopping it at the blue line. There on the play was Rick Boyle. And it's out to center ice. Off to the near wing. All the way down. Ballou's going to swing back to get it here. Use the wall to the far side. Good pressure to keep it in, though. Coming down on the wing was Tim Boyle. And the puck still in the Hingham zone. Just over nine minutes to go in the second period. And the puck slides into the Harborman zone. Hingham with the puck now at the red line. They'll send it in and chase in on the play. Chasing after the puck is Robichaud. Puck loose, cleared, out center ice, out all the way down. This could be icing. It is. And it is. Eight and a half to go here in the second period. Hingham leads by the score of one to nothing. Much more from the TD Garden in a moment on the Comcast Network. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> You wouldn't do it there. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. <laughs> Fast break to the Big Apple to watch the Celtics face the Knicks, presented by Amtrak. One winner and a guest will receive round-trip tickets on Amtrak's Acela Express from Boston to New York. Two tickets to the April 6th game at Madison Square Garden and one night hotel stay. For the game! Got it! At the buzzer! <laughs> Spend a night in New York with the Boston Celtics as Amtrak presents Fast Break to the Big Apple. One nothing on the scoreboard for Hingham, but there's been a lot of good hits. Let's go to our greatest hits right here. Well, lots of playoff hockey where you're reducing space, trying to cut down the opportunity for the other guy to move fluidly around the ice. You talked about it being a little choppy. That's an explanation of why it's a little choppy. There's a lot of bodies flying around here. Both teams trying to reduce time and space, not give the other team a lot of room to maneuver. Do a good job of it. <laughs> I, I'll tell you, it's dicey out there. It's very hard to move. Nice work by our camera crew and the editors and those who push the buttons. Nice job on that. Very good. Bone jarring action, bring it down to ice level. Sometimes it's not as easy to feel those from up here atop of the TD Garden. At center ice, in red, Catholic Memorial brings the puck in. They send it deep. Catholic Memorial with a rich tradition in this tournament. They won last year, they'd like to win again. Hingham has never taken yeah, they haven't the been trophy able to, home they, from here. Hingham hasn't been able to get the puck in the CM's defensive end at all. And the puck all the way down, another whistle for icing. You know, you talk about being up here on the ninth floor, the late, great Fred Cusick, who was my idol as a broadcaster and a great man, told me why he retired. He left the old garden, which was almost at mezzanine level, 
came here, he was in his early 80s, late 70s, he couldn't see the numbers anymore. It was too high up for him to see the numbers, so he figured he ought to retire. Well, I've always said, Norty, from this level, they should do it like taxi cabs and put the numbers on top of the helmets. Yeah. Well, it's pretty clear down here. But Fred was a lot older than you and I, and he was one of the great broadcasters that ever was. I did color with him one night for an AHL game up in, uh, up in New Hampshire. It was a great time. He's a Northeastern guy, you know. Yes, he was. Terrific athlete himself. Here's a chance for CM. That shot goes through the glove all the way around. Another chance as CM starting to put some pressure on now. Trailing one to nothing with seven and a half to go in the second period. Well, they, they just again, once again, CM just keeps throwing it back. And this is going to end up with bad things happening for Hingham. You just can't. You're spending too much time on your own end. Nearly happened there. They keep the puck alive. Then they roll it down into the far wing. Chasing in after it there is Tony or Troy Storet. Puck goes around behind the net. 7.05 to go now. Again, Hingham needs a whistle here as CM putting on great pressure. That puck goes through the crease. Hingham players are absolutely exhausted here. Now they bang the puck off the wall and out to center. I stop right at the red line, rolling it in. Finally again, they get it out, but it's shot right back in. I tell you, CM once again really buttoned up the defense, just not giving uh, Hingham any room to maneuver. Hingham cannot maintain possession, come through the center of the ice. When they finally get the puck to center ice, they've got to dump it in and make a change. So CM goes back and gets it first. More pressure right there, nearly a giveaway. Able to bound the, bang the puck off the wall was Coveney. And now finally, Hingham gets to center ice, trying yeah, to bring the puck in. One of the three rushers had to go off the ice for line change because they were backed in their own end too much. They were right out again. Tim Driscoll had it taken away from him. Check, handed out in the neutral zone. And now it's the Knights who send it in deep. Coming in to help out is Coveney. Rides the man off the wall. Standing there is Linehan. Puck cleared around past him. Out towards center ice. Here comes Hingham. They've got a lead. By the score of one to nothing. With the puck is Fitzgerald. He goes around behind the net. Knocks Say Strong in the cage and he watches as his teammates come out to center ice. Would have been a hand pass there but not in the defensive zone. And so the play continues. So there was one shot by Hingham, then CM got possession and out they came. Now back down the far wing. Here's a shot from there. Good save is made by Knox on a good wrist shot that time from Trangley. We mentioned this in the first period. Let's mention it again. A very important uh, charity coming up, Norty. Yeah, check that number out. 781-762-2557. An evening of faith, hope, and inspiration. And that's the Matt Brown uh, number 3org uh, you can get all the information on the Matt Brown Benefit Night by calling that number. It's a great night. And, uh, of course, Matt Brown, badly hurt. Norwood High hockey player uh, is still hospitalized, badly hurt in a hockey incident uh, in a hockey game. Uh, hit the board, very similar to the Travis Roy situation. And I uh, uh, want to do all we can to help with the medical expenses. It rarely happens, but every once in a while in any sport. One to nothing. Hingham leading, CM with the puck, and here come the Knights. They bring it in, one on two on four. Good defensive work to clear the puck around. Able to get it out to center ice this time. They'll be a race for it. Chasing after it is Jeff West. He's beaten to the puck, though. Good defensive work by Tim Boyle. Here's a shot that's knocked away. And then out at center ice. Hingham seals off the neutral zone for a moment and tries to send it in. But quickly, CM in a transition game, gets the puck, sends it, it's deflected. Around behind the net, centering pass cleared aside by the net minder, Derek McGinnis. Back to the point, that shot over the top of the net. Not sure McGinnis saw that. And at the side of the net, here's a chance right out in front. The shot was just wide on the short side. You know, you just can't allow CM to have this much possession. You're just, you know, tempting fate here. Uh, this is the exact opposite to the way Hingham played the first period. They've got to do something to change this tempo around because they've got no answer to see him. This is a snapshot right from the hash mark. And that's what's just happening over and over again. Possession in the zone. Pretty soon you get those point blank shots. Here's another chance right off the faceoff. McGinnis had to drop down and kick it out with the right pad. Hingham 
Tried to move it out. They drop it off well, right in the slot. A bad defensive play. They get lucky there. They get the puck. They bring it back. Crowd comes to life. There's a lot of people here tonight from Hingham. That's just a bad pass. That's a giveaway pass. Coming down the left wing side. Eric Sherman, good player. Had the puck. He just threw the puck away to the middle. CM gets it and back out they come. Puck taken. Shot right back in. Both these teams have a lot of red in their uniform so of course so do the fans as well so there's lots of red jerseys on fans here tonight i think a lot of the cm uh, fans some of the kids went to the st patrick's day parade because there's a su <laughs> substantial amount of that cm section is green out at center ice good defensive play stopping the puck in the neutral zone here comes hingham that shot off the mark taken off the stick of tim driscoll he has scored the game's only goal they try to roll it out in front again been very rare to receive offensive chances from Hingham. There's a shot, never got to the cage. Well, this is the longest possession they've had in the second period. And there's just 3.05 to go now in period two. Puck around to the near side. And cleared out to center ice, getting it, sending it in, but offside on the play was Catholic Memorial, and the Knights will have to reset and take the face off as well outside in the neutral zone. 6-0-2 of the first period. Tim Driscoll had his 32nd goal from Connor Coveney and Steve Ballou. There's, There's some Hingham folks. Yep. Well, I know they sold over 1,000 tickets yesterday down in Hingham. And whenever you Hingham and towns like Hingham and uh, Canton and places like that, Newburyport are in the tournament. There's big crowds here. The big crowd in the uh, girls' game to follow where St. Mary's and Lennon Woburn play for the girls' Division One championship uh, a big crowd from St. Mary's and a huge crowd in black and orange. Here's a shot right on goal, and that backhander just went wide. Good bid that time. Trangley had that great opportunity, well, and that it was put aside. That would have been something to spend most of the period in your own end and end up with another goal. Bingham tries to walk it out. They get the puck through the neutral zone. That a little bit too far for Fitzgerald, who's got some jets. Players looking a little punch drunk here at the end of... This second period, they have worked pretty hard to sort of reaching for pucks instead of skating to them. Pass ahead too far. Catholic Memorial wants to get it out. They can't get it out. Kept alive. Chance for Hingham. A shot save. Rebound loose right out in front. Another chance. And that one's deflected away. Chasing after the puck is Jeff West. Gets it around to the near side. Around behind. West has it there. He tried to roll it out in front. Chasing after it is Tom O'Brien. O'Brien trying to feather it back along the wall, but it's CM getting the puck, and Catholic Memorial goes to offense. Long shot in his stick to side, and the puck goes out of play with 1.31 to go in the second period, and finally it seems... Yeah, after 13 minutes, Higgins was able to generate some offense in the CM end. They got to do more of that. You know, I just don't believe that they can hang on for another 15 minutes and a minute and 31 seconds and make a one to nothing lead stand up. They may be able to do it, but I don't like the odds of that. Around to the far side. Hingham in white through the neutral zone. They send it ahead. That was deflected, so no icing. That was off the stick of Mark Hetrick. Catholic Memorial would like nothing more than to take a tie hockey game into the locker room Mark, as they bring the puck in across the blue line. Mark Hetrick's a real good defenseman. Out at center ice, whirling with the puck is Pompeo. That is Andrew. Andrew gets the puck around behind the net. Gets it to Sherman with a chance right out in front. That was nearly deflected in. To the neutral zone, we're in the final minute of the second period. Shot glove. Hanging on is McGinnis, and he'll hold it. Well, that was going to go well wide, but I don't think he wanted to take any chances. He just threw get that puck, hold on to it, get a face off to his right. You see the chance by uh, Hingham went in front of the net, a little deflection. Puck goes careening through the goal crease. And see him down the other end has one as the puck is going to come across the line. And a little snapshot getting left to right, come back the other way. Again, that was going wide. Shot by number five, Dan O'Hare. A lot of times, when you come right to left uh, by the hash marks there in front of the goalie, you can get the goalie to move come back the other way, but he got a little too far away to do that. Shot right on goal, handled by McGinnis off the blocker, comes back to the point, that shot off the mark, kept alive, it's a shooting gallery now in the Hingham zone, that shot never gets to the net, and the puck is clean around and out towards center ice, chasing after it there. 
Andrew Pompeo. Picked up by CM. Knights come in, shot deflected off of the leg. Goes to the corner, centering pass out in front again. Good defensive play by Jake <coughs> Quinn. And he's able to get the puck and clear it up towards center ice and all the way down. This uh -oh. will be icing. And a big icing call with just, you just over 12 these. seconds to go in the second period. You know, he got the puck just inside the blue line, spun around and just dumped it down the other end. I think they were out of gas and needed a change. But you hate to give CM a, fit, a face, -off, face off to the left of your goalie with 12.2 ticks left in the period. Big win here coming up for him. Andrew Pompey is going to take the face off. I'm always telling you your best face off guys are to have them take these kind. Derek Colucci with the draw. He comes outside the line. Through center ice sending it in. Time will run out in the period. And the score that we had at the end of the first period will be the score that we have here after period number two. Had to hold up there for a minute just to make that shot. <laughs> Hingham leading Catholic Memorial after two by the margin of one to nothing. Norty, this game has been kind of interesting. Hingham has never taken the title home from here. CM has pretty much owned this tournament. Very interesting. Uh, that CM, the much better CM team that period. Very good defensively. Uh, I tell you, Hingham playing rope a dope in that period. I don't think they can do that another period and win. All right, we'll be back with the president of the MIAA, Barry Haley, in just a moment. One to nothing, Hingham. Sports are great for a kid's body. Once again, back at the Garden in our second intermission, it's time to bring in the president of the MIAA. It's a voluntary position, but uh, Barry Haley joining us now. Barry, welcome in here. Uh, I know this is a voluntary position, but one obviously you take very, very seriously. Sure. The, um, you know, as, as chairman of the board of directors, I serve as president in a two-year term, and uh, I'm a high school athletic director, so it's uh, a, a mission uh, that I enjoy, uh, enjoy kids and sports, so just a continuation of what I do. We should give Concord Carlisle a plug there. That's not just uh, an athletic director, but you, you're working with uh, Concord Carlisle, and, uh, and I know the MIA is very, very happy. You're up for uh, your re-election, I understand, so lots going on. You work with the lacrosse and the ice hockey, uh, ice hockey coming to a conclusion here, and so is the winter season, so it's been a very exciting time. I know we talked earlier with Bill Gain about the, this season coming to a close, but a very, very exciting day here at the Garden. Well, today, today is the, the final day of the winter season. We've had um, about three weeks now of tournament play in all of the winter sports, wrestling, alpine ski, Nordic ski, swim, uh, diving, uh, ice hockey, basketball, with just tens of thousands of kids uh, having uh, the tournament experience, uh, participating in front of small crowds, large crowds, enthusiastic crowds. Uh, it's, just, it's just been a great uh, couple of weeks to be involved in high school athletics. And how tough is it for you and for your staff to be able to get to all of these events? Do you feel like, remember they used to say Ray Flynn, there was 10 Ray Flynns running around the city of Boston. Do you feel like you have to be like that during this time of year? Well, one of the, one of the difficult jobs of a tournament director is we try to balance the tournament schedule out so um, school administrators from a school can support all of their teams. So a lot of times we're juggling games around. Um, I, I juggle the game over a band concert that half of a girls hockey team was playing in um, so they could do both things. So it's, uh, we're always moving the chess pieces around to try to make the perfect situation for a school. How's the weather been? Normally, the winter season, it's been an awful lot of snow. This weekend has been amazing with torrential downpours. Well, I, I was in the, the centrum yesterday for about uh, five basketball games and six basket, uh, hockey games today, uh, so I haven't been outside, so I really don't know. I heard it was raining outside, but um, we've had great weather for the time of, of the tournament, and one of the key components of a successful tournament is good matchups and good weather, and we've had both. That's good. We're going to ask Barry to stick around for a few months, and we'll come right back. More from the garden right after this. Steroids can really damage your body. They can cause tendons to tear and bones to stop growing, damage kidneys, destroy the liver, even cause heart attacks and strokes. Not to mention something else they can do to a guy's body. 
Find out more about the dangers of using steroids. Visit drugfree.org. Rondo the bounce back. Oh, what a play! And a towel comes up in the air from the bench. Rondo has to take it. Big shot! World champions, Mike, find a way to win. Got it! When New England sports fans want expert discussion, you knew the Pats defense was in for a tough night. They tune into Mohegan Sun Sports tonight. They've won 11 straight max. Now they're a very talented team. Felger and Tangway dish the dirt on your favorite local teams every weeknight. It's Fenway Park. Score runs. Why don't they value him? I don't get it. Join the discussion with opinions that matter. I think it's going to work. Get a life, dude. Mohegan Sun Sports tonight. Every weeknight at 6.30 and 10 on Comcast Sportsnet. Once again, back to the garden. We are in our second intermission. I'm Greg Madden, and we're joined again by Barry Haley, who's the president of the MIAA. He just told me a second ago before we came back on camera, he's been here since 7.30 this morning, but it's taken weeks and weeks of preparation to get to this point. And really what it is is uh, an opportunity uh, to teach and to have the, the athletic uh, opportunities for the young students, which you were talking about now is in the tens of thousands each, each of your uh, competing seasons. It, it is. You, you go to different schools. At, at Conquer Carlisle, we, we have about 70% of our student body actively in, involved in athletics. Tomorrow, the spring season starts. We'll have 450 students uh, running out to the fields and in the gyms. Um, so, they, you know, it just is a continuation of, of what we offer as an educational program at all of our schools. Um, we call it the other half of education. It's really nice to see that there's a lot of athletics at this end because there's a lot that's written um, in the press these days that there are kids that are sort of moving away from athletics. I'm guessing you're seeing that maybe perhaps that's not the case. Well, they, you know, a good, a comprehensive high school offers something for everyone, uh, whether it's music, art, drama, debate, whatever it is, or athletics. I, I'm, I'm the athletic director. I'm passionate about athletics. Uh, we encourage kids to be involved, and kids want to be involved, and kids want to have the experience. Uh, and, and, you know, we... we Try not to ever worry about wins and losses, but try to provide kids with educational experience to help them learn and grow. Schools in the MIA, are, they, are you finding that uh, the athletic programs are very, very different than when you and I went to school? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think they're, they're basically the same. We offer them a, di a, you know, a kind of a different message. Um, as uh, Bill talked about, sportsmanship and respect are key messages and the expectations we have of kids and the expectations they have of schools and coaches is different than, than we were. We, we kind of like marched along. Uh, now the students have an opinion. Uh, we have uh, captain's advisory groups at almost every school that, that let the, the administration of the school know how they want their program to be and, and we, we try to provide programs that uh, of interest to kids. Well, I know you probably have a lot of good days during the course of the year. Is this one of your best days? Uh, I, I believe so. I, I just love to see the kids out there enjoying the experience. Uh, you know, our, my school, Concord, lost in the sectional final last week for the third straight year, and I would love to have the kids have the experience that the kids are having out there. When I, 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 I've given a couple of second-place finalist trophies uh, out today, and, and I, I know those kids wouldn't trade that position for anyone to have the experience they have today. Well, thanks an awful lot. It was great to see you guys again. We're very proud to spend some time with you here during our uh, second intermission. That's Barry Haley. He's the president of the MIAA. We'll take a break. When we come back, Bob Norton jumps back in. We'll do his stats and highlights. That's all coming ahead. Boom! <laughs> hey, hey, where are you going? Can't get by me. I'm number one in this class. I rule this lab. I'm number one. Hey, hey, I don't think so. Yes! Weather! I am a king! Woo! You wouldn't do it there. Woo! So, don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. What? Jerk. At Polaris, we didn't build a machine with 70 horsepower to be taken out for a Sunday drive. Like we didn't engineer a machine that packs an 800 twin EFI to haul around a picnic basket. 
and our deals are just as extreme. Right now, get up to $1,200 in rebates and financing as low as 3.99% during the XP sales event. Going on now at your local participating Polaris dealer. We build our machines to give you a heart pounding, breathtaking, pulse pumping, trophy hauling ride of a lifetime. Get up to $1,200 in rebates and financing as low as 3.99% on the hardest working, smoothest riding line of ATVs and side-by-sides. The Polaris XP sales event. Up to $1,200 in rebates and financing as low as 3.99%. Going on now at your local participating Polaris dealer. Greg Madden, Bob Norton, and our entire CNA crew, or Comcast Network as we call ourselves now. We'd like to uh, welcome you back here. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, and there weren't a lot of goals scored in that second period. In fact, none. A uh, good, good, solid goal tending by Derek McGinnis, and uh, Derek McGinnis has had a very nice junior year for Higgins, but solid the Nets. He's going to make more saves today than he's had an average number of saves all year long. Average 16.2. He'll have a bunch more than that. He's been very solid. Tidy around the net, taking face offs with his head too. He's got a shutout through two. You take a look at the shots on goal, are starting to move the next few two periods, starting to move a little bit more in Cap Memorial's direction. I thought it'd be even more so than that. A one for one, I'll tell you, Hingham's got a great power play, operates about 36% efficiency. They get a, they're going to try to draw another penalty on CM, so they can convert another power play goal. And uh, scoring chances on CM much better in that second period than in the first. And there's a Hingham fan, all excited. Norty, very quickly here, what are each team looking to do now? Third period, Hingham has a one nothing lead here. Uh, Hingham has got to be able to gain possession of the puck in their own end, maintain possession through center zone and into the offensive zone, and create some offense. They only had one about 30-second, 40-second surge. When they, they've got to do that most second, most of this period. CM needs to bottle them up the same thing they did in that second period. Not let them get beyond the defensive blue line and convert the chances they're getting in the offensive end and create more of them. All right. We have a very exciting third period coming your way. It's Hingham leading by one. And we'll be back in a moment on the Comcast Network. Sometimes kids just don't see it. Steroids can ruin bones, tendons, organs, and dreams. Talk to your kids about the dangers of steroids. Visit drugfree.org. Thank you. Can I help you today? Uh, no thanks. I'm just looking. Oh, this is cute. <clears throat> so? You wouldn't do it there. So don't do it here. Sportsmanship. It's up to you. Like they're the fashion police. Make NCAA March Madness better. Papa's in the house. With Papa John's $10 buzzer beater. All large pizzas, just $10. Your choice of toppings. Your choice of pizzas. Even specialties, just $10. Plus, get a free Coke Zero when you buy two 20-ounce Cokes online at PapaJohns.com. You run the cheese, baby. Let's eat. <laughs> Papa John's. Get Papa John's $10 buzzer beater before time runs out. Greg Madden, Bob Norton. And our Comcast Network crew bringing you the excitement of great high school hockey action here from the TD Garden. It is between Catholic Memorial and Hingham. Hingham has a one-goal lead, and we're getting set for a very exciting third period. One of the things I've noticed about CM as I've watched them during... We'd like to uh, welcome you back here. Let's take a look at some of the highlights, and there weren't a lot of goals scored in that second period. In fact, none. Uh, good, good, solid goal tending by Derek McGinnis, and 
Uh, Derek McGinnis has had a very nice junior year for Higgins, but solid the Nets. He's going to make more saves today than he's had an average number of saves all year long. Average 16.2. He'll have a bunch more than that. He's been very solid, tidy around the net, taking face-offs when he's had to. He's got a shutout through two. You take a look at the shots on goal. Uh, starting to move the next few two periods, starting to move a little bit more in Cap Memorial's direction. I thought it'd be even more so than that. A one for one, I tell you, Hingham's got a great power play, operates about 36% efficiency. They get a, they're going to try to draw another penalty on CM, saying they can burn another power play goal. And uh, scoring chances, CM much better in that second period than in the first. And there's a Hingham fan, all excited. Norty, very quickly here, what are each team looking to do now? Third period, Hingham has a one nothing lead here. Uh, Hingham has got to be able to gain possession of the puck in their own end, maintain possession through center zone and into the offensive zone, and create some offense. They only had one about 30-second, 40-second surge. When they, they've got to do that most second, most of this period. CM needs to bottle them up the same thing they did in that second period, not let them get beyond their defensive blue line, and convert the chances they're getting in the offensive end and create more of them. All right, we have a very exciting third period coming your way. It's Hingham leading by one, and we'll be back in a moment on the Comcast Network. Greg Madden, Bob Norton, and our Comcast Network crew bringing you the excitement of great high school hockey action here from the TD Garden. It is between Catholic Memorial and Hingham. Hingham has a one-goal lead, and we're getting set for a very exciting third period. One of the things I've noticed about CM as I've watched them during the season and in the tournament, they're a pretty good third-period team. They tend to weigh you down the third period. They've outscored opponents 6-3 to three in the tournament in the third period. And over the course of the regular season, they've outscored their opponents 23-16 in the third period. Well, there's their mentor, Bill Hansen, working his bench, dressed up in his St. Patrick's Day glory. There's a chance to look at Derek McGinnis. He has eight saves here tonight and a very solid save percentage in the postseason. Well, I, you know, I'd be shocked if he didn't see at least eight shots in this third period, if he can keep that shot total down, four shots a game, I don't think CM's going to beat Hingham only getting four shots in this period. Hingham what? is in white. They have a one nothing lead. They chip the puck out to the neutral zone and skate it ahead. Hingham looking to build on their lead. They come down. Here's a chance right in front. The shot is a save. Biggest save of the night right there by Tommy Knox. Oh, that was a great save by Knox and a terrific play by Hingham on the break. Good hard shot by Andrew Papio. And the puck cleared to center ice. Here comes CM. Looking to tie it up. They go to the net. Can't get the shot off. Puck goes to the corner. They roll it out in front, standing there defensively to pick that puck up as Eric Sherman. And he clears it ahead to center ice. Hingham comes in, but as they do, they're in ahead of the play and offside. See that? Uh, right now in the first period, this is the best scoring opportunity that Hingham's had 
for a while as they maintain possession coming in the zone. Just a fake of that shot from the outside by Andrew Pompeo and then to try to slide it across. Just a terrific play. 14-12 remaining and Tommy Knox with a terrific stop. 14 saves over two periods and change. Puck out right in front of the scorer's bench. At center ice, puck is shot in. It fires off the glass. High shot all the way around. Right now, again, we talked about this in the second period, Norty. They start to set up a shooting gallery after a while, which gets the players running around in their own zone. Well, I don't care about shooting galleries when they're missing by 10 feet. Out at center ice, spoken like a true coach. At the neutral zone with the puck there. Now, see, they, they dump it in, and now they have somebody alive enough to win and maybe pressure the puck. Usually when they dumped it in that second period, they were dumping it in on a change. They did it right there. They've got some fresh troops on, which they need. Just don't throw it there. And out to center ice. Here's a pass in stride. Hingham brings it in a shot. Just misses on the short side. Good hard shot by Alex Papio. Kept alive. Hingham, they roll it out in front. Intercepted there nicely by Mark Hetnick. Hetnick gets the pass ahead. Now he'll take it himself and go deep with it. Sends it along the wall. Of all the defense that I've wa watched this year play, Hetnick is as good as anybody. Here it comes back to the point with a good shot. Rister, right on goal, save. Rebound came loose and then covering up on the play is Derek McGinnis. Yeah, that's what McGinnis, I think, has done a very good job of tonight. One of the things he's done is keep a clean uh, net cage area, clean cage area. When you get that puck, now freeze it right away. Get the puck frozen so you don't have loose puck right there. Keep your crease clean. Good clock control there, get it controlled, get the glove down on it, freeze it. Keep that area in front of your net quiet. Hingham tries to bring it up on the right wing on the far side. It is stopped along the wall. Players for each side get to it. Catholic Memorial gets it. The Knights send it deep. There's a centering pass. Side of the net, shot safe. Rebound right out in front. Oh, what a stop right there by McGinnis. That's the best save of the night. Player falls down on the puck. They start pushing after it. Oh, boy, did McGinnis make a beauty right there. Well, that's what gets you to think that all the stars might be lined up right when you end up getting almost what looks like an open net for CM and they're not able to convert. Turnover in the back, puck gets flipped in front, and this is just a wide open shot, just wide of the net. Great opportunity for CM. Terrific forechecking behind the goal. First chance, now the second chance. Great opportunity for Number 14, Brian Bessinger, their hottest player in the playoffs with eight points, three goals, and five assists. And boy, I tell you, that's as good a chance as he's had all tournament long. That may have gone off the mask of the netminder, Derek McGinnis. Wow. It was great stop. A spectacular stop. He just dove across with everything he had. Here they come again, Catholic Memorial. The defending champs get the shot, it's deflected away. It goes to the corner, round behind. Puck cleared along the wall, Stepped up, kept it, keeping it alive there is Lazaro. This is a man advantage situation. It is the first in this period. They are 0 for 1 on the game. Here's a shot right on, save. Hanging on is McGinnis, and he covers up. CM, CM has struggled on power play all season long. At 20% effectiveness on power play, 9% in the tournament. And that's not real good. 20% is not good for them. And 9% in the tournament is not very good at all. Uh, Hingham has been very good on power play and pretty good at shorthand. 53 seconds on the man advantage. That shot deflected on the way through off the stick of Starrett. Yeah, all those stats notwithstanding, you don't want to make a living playing shorthand against CM. <laughs> True, good point. 11 and a half to go, third period. Puck stolen away. Hingham with a chance right on. A bomb. Good hard shot. Tim Driscoll. Uh, nice stick play by Driscoll. Four check the puck away with the stick. He has a very quick release. His goal is the only one that's found the net here tonight. It's his 28th of the year, and that came in the first period. It was a power play goal. Puck free in the Hingham zone along the wall on the far side. Driscoll tries to chop it out, and it goes into the Hingham bench, which stops the play. You know, I've watched, uh, watched him play quite a bit, Tim Driscoll, and he's a kind of, he's sort of what I call a quiet, 28-29 goal scorer. You know, you watch him play night after night, and lots of times you don't really notice him. And then all of a sudden you look at the stat chart at the end of the game, goal two assists, goal three assists, and he's been a terrific year for them. And boy, uh, none bigger than the goal he scored in the first period. 
Catholic Memorial wins the faceoff. They get a shot. It never gets to the net. Hingham able to get to it. They clear it out and send it all the way down. No icing. Play handled there by Catholic Memorial. And they look to bring it to center ice. Shane Dorsey. Teams at equal strength now as the puck is shot in. Blockered away by McGinnis. Good hard work along the wall. Puck comes out in front. And right there to get to it. Good play. Trying to move out to center ice. Knocked down in the neutral zone was Eric Sherman. I see a lot of those plays during the course of the year. Some are called interference. Some are not. I didn't think that was, but I've seen it called interference when it wasn't that much. I was hoping it wasn't a knee on knee. Sherman able to get right to the bench. And Hingham skates it away. Out at center ice. Stopped there in the neutral zone by Ballou. Ballou's quick skater drops it off. Scoring chance. They had Ballou all by himself in front. Well, it wasn't read real well there by uh, John Fitzgerald, the number 14 struggle. They didn't quite read each other properly, and the result, the uh, pass was not converted. Shane Dorsey took that shot off his glove. It nearly directed it toward the cage. Still 1-0 Hingham from the first period on to this point. Under 10 minutes to go, third period. Catholic Memorial with the puck and a bid. Here's a chance it's deflected off of a stick and out of play. I'll tell you what's changed a little bit this second period. Hingham's defense, a uh, third period rather, Hingham's defense in the center of the ice is a little stickier. In that second period, CM was able to move the puck down to the middle of the ice and establish possession. And Hingham's much scrappier in the middle of the ice this third period, and CM finding it a harder time to gain possession in the Hingham defensive end. Well, what we're really seeing, Norty, is this could be another icing here on Hingham, is a real good sort of coaching uh, chess match here. What happened in the first period was corrected by Bill Hansen and his staff after that first period. After the second period, it was Tony Messina and his team at Hingham trying to make a correction there as well here too. Yeah, I think when you're in Hingham's spot, it's a difficult spot to be because you want to be aggressive, yet you don't want to be so aggressive while there's a great face-off shot. My goodness, can't allow those. Good alert play by McGinnis there out the face-off. You want to play aggressively, but you can't play so aggressively you give them odd man rushes. Watch this out the face-off. Snap it. That's Colucci. He's good at it. He wins this draw. It drops it back off to the point. Shot coming right on. Save just dropping down is McGinnis. Yeah, this young goaltender. Yeah, that's lots of confidence. Well, clean crease again. You know, you get that shot. You smother it. No rebounds. Nothing loose. I'm not talking about just rebounds. Nothing loose around the goal crease. Keep it clean. With the exception of that jumping save he's made, he's been very calm in the cage, too. Out at center ice. Chasing after it. Moving with a puck to drive, and it's right on, and a good hard shot. Another chance in front. First one was by Driscoll, and then the other one pops up, and the goaltender, Tommy Knox, hangs on to it. Tommy Knox not getting the same credit as McGinnis, but he's played a very strong game. Well, you game. saw Tommy Knox here. We saw the way BU won the national championship last year with that puck flip, that nine iron over the goal. He never saw it. Tommy Knox has to be very alert here. Break by Hingham. They get the shot off from the outside. That rebound's going to come out to that high slot area, and it's just going to be golfed. It's up in the air. Don't want it to go over your shoulder. Grab it, get a face off. Jack Parker loves that shot. Well, yeah. Just yeah. over nine minutes to go in the third period. One to nothing, Hingham. They roll the puck out in front. Catholic Memorial clears, but not out of the zone. Kept alive by Hingham. They send the puck and work it now in the right wing corner. Puck still there. Good forecheck pressure, as we saw in the first period by Hingham. And finally, CM's going to use the far wall to our near side and get it out to center ice. Puck free in the neutral zone. A little sloppy play on both sides there. Hingham gets a piece of it, and they'll look to start it out up towards center ice. Jake Quinn, strong game. Gets it ahead. It's tipped forward. And then on the forecheck is John Fitzgerald, one of the best skaters on the ice tonight. Well, if you're not a good skater, you're going to stick out like a sore thumb out in that ice tonight. There's a lot of skaters. There's a chance Hingham, that's a whistling shot wide of the mark. They take a lot of shots. Coveney again with that bomb. Hingham's happy to take the shots when they get them, and they just let them. If you rip. got a gun, shoot it, and Coveney can fire the puck. Hingham in their own zone, trying to get it out quickly. They do through the neutral zone. Good work defensively to stop the play, slow it down, regain possession, and here come the Knights. They trail by a goal with just under eight minutes to go now in the third period. Puck 
Stopped along the wall. Good play, Knights. They'll go to the cage, have a man in front well covered. It comes to the near side and finally cleared out to the neutral zone. Chasing after it, there is Jeff West. He's a name we've mentioned many times already tonight. Hingham tries to keep it along. And while they do, drop pass in the slot. Good chance, shot, blocker, save. Rebound loose in front and it's cleared aside. Dangerous play, Hingham playing in the bouncing puck in all different angles here. Well, this line is a pretty effective line for uh, Hingham. It's a line that cut the goal, the game-winning goal off the that post. That one went off the post. A My bouncing goodness. puck from the outside. Now it's right in front again. Good chance for CM. A backhand bid. That one's blocked. Forehand chance. Glove save. And he hangs on. We're back with more in a moment. Welcome back, where Catholic Memorial's been knocking on the door and they almost got one here, Bob Norton. Oh, they sure this is hockey mayhem in front of McGinnis. Just terrific work by McGinnis in the nets, just staying square to the puck. Makes the saves that he needs to make, and uh, you know, under panic, Hingham just threw the puck away a couple of times. Had time, had some space to make a play, but I'll tell you, when you got a one nothing lead and you can smell a state championship, it's a tendency for panic to set in, and you make those passes, those throwaways, that just ended up right back at you. Second time tonight, Catholic Memorial has hit the post, and now Two with climbers. 6.57 to go in the third period on the day where we move the clocks ahead, time becomes a big factor. On the draw, puck is cleared out and all the way down. And they call it icing. Well, it was icing. Uh, there was uh, just a quick snap off the uh, face-off circle, 6.52 remaining. And you know, they're just trying to get the puck out of the zone and not have to deal with the CM possession in their defensive zone. You try not to take the icing, but nonetheless, you want to get it out of there. Colucci, the captain for CM. Good face-off. Is taking this face-off. He'll draw against Andrew Pomp Pompeo on the draw. It's cleared out. No, not out. Kept alive. Here's a shot deflection. Another chance. Side of the net. Goaltender goes behind the net on the dive. A little over-aggressive, but gets back to the cage. He has not been jumping around through most of the game. Uh, he's a very quiet player. I mean, one of the things I've noticed about McGinnis in the nets and what I like about a goaltender is that he's quiet. Watch those giving goals behind the net. See him anticipate. They're not able to pick it off. Puck cleared out all the way down, chasing it back as Pompeo. Still working it there. Tied up. Knocked down. No call. Play continues. We've only had three penalties in tonight's game. The only goal was scored on a power play. It was Tim Driscoll, his 28th of the season. As I've watched this tournament right from the beginning to the end, at all levels, very few penalties called in any games. And I think all the MIAs work on sportsmanship and officiating and uh, work with the officials has paid off. It's been a terrific tournament in that regard. Up at center ice. Here comes Hingham, long shot. Probably had a shot there, was right into the midsection of Knox and he hangs on. We've been mentioning this all throughout the night. Nordy, I'd like to turn it over to you once again. Well, a big benefit night coming up. The evening of faith, hope, and inspiration. Uh, you can find out on mattbrown3.org or by calling 781-762-2557. Get all the information you need to get on that, the Matt Brown benefit. We thank you very much for providing that information. Here's a shot right on save. Bouncing puck side of the net. Hingham trying to jump on top of it. It was deflected away. 
Another chance in front, picked up. We go back the other way. Under six minutes to go now, third period. Good defensive work by Hingham. It goes to the goaltender, and McGinnis will hang on. Yeah, April 30th is the date of that uh, benefit from Matt Brown. I haven't mentioned that. Previous two times you mentioned it, but it is April 30th. You go to that website, and you get all the information you want. Well, thank you for getting us that information, and thanks to our crew for putting it up there. It's uh, obviously a very, very worthy cause, opportunity, and benefit. From the face-off, puck loose in the circle. This is desperation time. It'll be interesting to see what happens here. Hingham with a one-goal lead. CM, for many, a prohibitive favorite. Not for Bob Norton. Yeah, though. I don't think, that, you know, you, you, you say that because of the record in the tournament and all, but I just felt that this was a very balanced flight coming in, and, uh, uh, you know, Hingham came in as a three seed, and they're sitting here, and the tournament game, I just don't think it's a shocker that uh, uh, they would be here and be playing a real strong game. Here's a chance, CM. A blast from the point. Players giving up the body. Yeah, he just shouldn't have two of them on one point. That's not great defense. One would suffice. Watch Here's out. a chance. Stop by CM. They go to the net. A shot. Club save is made by McGinnis, and he hangs on as TJ O'Brien cut in with a good snapshot. Yeah, he's been pretty quiet all game long, and he's a guy you have to really watch out for because he's got terrific skills. Had 29 points coming into the tournament on the season, but T.J. O'Brien is a guy late in the game that can make big plays and make big things happen. And we see two defenders out there blocking one shooter. I like the block. I don't like the two-on-one. Norty, we're under five minutes to go, but you and I have seen enough games to know that a one-goal game can quickly turn the other way very, very quickly. Well, I didn't think it would last this long, so it's gone. It's done well to last this long. Here's a giveaway in the neutral zone. Coming in, CM. They work the far wall, try to drop in the slot. There great defensively, read. though, to pick it up and come back the other way is Sherman, who's had a great game. Here's Hingham with a chance. They never get the shot off. He was trying to toe drag that, Driscoll was, and just missed it. He'd been able to pull that off. He'd have been standing alone in front. Well, that could be a penalty. Going oh, back boy, the no other call. Way. Good solid body check there. Players go down to the ice. They get back up, and now they collide again. We've got a great finish for you. Here's their turnaround chance in front. Shot is a save. McGinnis holds on, and now we got some after the whistle pushing and shoving. Well, I don't think McGinnis knew where the puck was. He had it under the pad, but I don't think he knew it. Now under four minutes to go in the third period. Well, now that watch this play along the wall. Great hit along the wall. The puck comes out behind the net. Oh, that was a good toe drag. Just loses it. At the end, see what would have happened if he'd made that play. He'd have walked in front all by himself. And now they're going to move the yeah, face, face off, off outside. outside. Well, it must have knocked the goal off, and it must have been a TM player to knock the goal off. Therefore, the face off's outside. Really tempted now, Hingham will be to play a lot of 1 2 2, which they played most of this third period, and just clog up the center of the ice and not allow CM to penetrate. Charlie had the puck knocked away from him. Out to center ice. Here come the Knights in red with the puck. Ever apparent, Lazaro had the puck. He was pinned into the wall. Good play there by Coveney. Centering pass was deflected around behind the net. They worked the near wall. Hingham tries to ride the man off the body. It goes around behind the net. Good don't coverage. just throw it there. See, they just they have possession, not being forced. And you throw the puck and give it away to the point man. You never get it out of there. Then all of a sudden, you run out of petrol in your own end. Hold on to the puck. Make a play. Kept alive get it out at the again. point. Now they say it's come outside the line. Right. The defender there was the skates were outside the blue line. But in the previous play, when, uh, when Alex Pompeo had the puck behind the goal line, he had no one near him. But you get tired. You know, you get tired. Fatigue sets in. You want to get rid of the puck and get off the ice. So you make that play and you just turn it over to the blue line. It comes back at you. You got to try this the time to have a little poise with the puck. If you're not pressed, find the spot, get it out of the zone. Mental fatigue also a big factor here. Both teams. Getting the puck through the neutral zone was Hingham. We have a whistle that stops the play. It's like an offside call. Under three minutes to go now in the third. Well, kudos to Tony Messina and Billy Hansen. Uh, great job. This has been a terrific game. A intensely played game. Tightly checked. Hard play. Both teams have competed. Good look at the coaches. He's a catamount. Out at center ice. 
Catholic Memorial gets it. They send it in. Hingham uses the wall to the near side. Tries to get it out. Players pinch along the wall. Get some help. Now, now more troops come through. And yeah, they just use the far wall to get it out. Still bouncing around. A lot of games on the ice surface here today. We have a whistle that stops the play. Well, what's unusual for these kids, most of these kids play on ice surfaces that are much harder than when you come into the garden. Much, much harder than when you go into any of these big facilities. And when you come in, this ice is softer, so you get tired more quickly playing on the ice. It's a little bit rougher, not as smooth. So the, the ice surface here, or if you went over to play at BC, or if you went up to play at UNH, totally different than what you play at normally in the rinks that you play on. On the draw, puck is controlled by CM. They shoot it in. Harborman want to bring it up. They give it away. That's a bad pass. Still loose. They try to battle to take it back. Kept alive and sent deep. This is not a time for blind passes into the middle. you got to make sure that who you're passing it to is there. Good pressure by Catholic Memorial. Hingham wants to try to do it. Now they hold on to that's it. That's good poise, though. You see, that's good poise. You didn't just throw the puck to the point. Excellent poise. Good defense there. Excellent. Poise with the puck. You don't just throw it away. They pop it up to center ice. Here comes Ballou. Ballou has the puck. Thinks offense. Wants to go to the cage. He does. Right in front. And it's clear to side. Ballou uh, is a defenseman. He had to hurry back there. That was Andrew Seipek, by the way, the defender on that last play. He played it so brilliantly. Good. Out right. of center ice, here comes CM, under two minutes to go. They bring the puck to the front of the net. Here's a shot right on, and it missed on the near side with McGinnis out to cut down the angle. Here's the puck, moved along the wall. It goes around behind, battling for it there. Try to get something going is Sturette. He drops it back to the point. Here's a shot pass to the far side. Right in on goal. Kick save is made by McGinnis. Another chance in front. Oh, what a stop there. Another shot, and that one's just wide. It's a shooting gallery in the CM offensive zone. Another chance, shot on goal, save, covered by McGinnis, and then charging into him is Colucci, who could get a penalty for that. Now they both are whacking each other, they're not gonna call any penalties on anybody right now unless it's really a glaring offense. Minute nine, if I were Coach Racina, I would call a timeout right now. He's got his troops are just fried, and you wanna make sure that in the last minute and nine seconds, your best players are on the ice and they're not tired. Well, it's not that often that Somebody you see the public up. school make the jump that we may see here tonight. And well, we I, talked about it in our opening. Yeah, I told you it's getting closer. And whether they win or lose, they played a heck of a game. You know, Reading two years ago won Burlington last year, got beat. But uh, the, 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 the balance out there among these teams, and you know, I've seen a lot of them. And there's a lot of good teams out there and a lot of good young players. And they're not all in the parochials. They're not all in any one place. Uh, CM has more than their share. Aren't the Catholic good players? BC High is going to have good players. But there's a lot of good players around. Needham's got good players. This team has good players. Uh, Woburn's got good players. There's, uh, there's a lot of teams around that have an excellent balance around. Wilmington in Division Two has got some terrific players. Uh, Newburyport's got good players. So I find the best. I, I would, if I had my brothers, I'd go back to single elimination, get rid of the one in the Super 8 tournament, and play this thing single elimination. I think we've come to the point where the balance is good enough to be able to do that. Crowd pretty happy here for a minute there. I thought you were doing no school announcements going through all those different towns. Last four years though, Bob, you pointed out, Weymouth in 